Hello, okay, so this is the second part of the quest for the tree kangaroo. Um, we left off on page uh, 183, okay? We were talking about how the computer chip was attached to the kangaroos and it was able to transmit to a satellite um, so they could track the kangaroos where they're going. Um, so we're gonna turn to page 185, okay? And I'm gonna pick up there. Do you have the screwdriver to put the collar on? Asks Lisa. Yes, yes, says Gabriel, holding the squirming bag on his lap. We're ready, but the the tree kangaroo isn't. Gabriel talks to the animal in the bag. Wait, wait, come here, he says gently. And then the two, tra two trackers hold him. Soon a pink nose pokes out through a hole in the bag. It's 10.55 a.m. and Holly paces, places the mask on the nose. A paw comes out through the hole. But within 45 seconds, the tree kangaroo relaxes. The anesthesia is working. She's asleep. Out comes the kangaroo. Thermometer, Holly requests. The kangaroo's body temperature is similar to a person's, 97.1 degrees. Respiration is 32, says Christine. That means she's breathing 32 mi times a minute. That's healthy. Holly leans forward to listen to the heart through her stethoscope. For five seconds, she counts the beats. She waits to calculate the beats per minute. Heart rate is 16 times 12. You do the math, she tells Joelle, who is recording everything on the data sheet. Meanwhile, Gabriel is putting on the collar. Make sure the collar is comfortable but snug, says Lisa. Holly puts in the microchip and Joelle records its number, 029-274-864. I'm going to do a pouch check, says Holly. Meanwhile, the other scientists measure everything they can as fast as they can. Pouch is empty, says Holly. Now for the vitamin mineral shot. This is it, says Lisa. She calls an end to the exam. Because he was injured, Oppum's exam took much longer. But we don't want to, want to subject this tree kangaroo to the anesthesia any longer than necessary for safety's sake. Holly removes the face mask and quickly checks the teeth. She's coming too, which means she's waking up. It is 11.06 a.m. Put her in the bag, says Lisa, tail first so she could sit. They name her Tess, in honor of my dog, a border collie who died last year at age 16. The new Tess rests in her bag on a tracker's lap while we prepare them for the mail. 11.20 a.m. Anesthetic machine? Gas ready? Radio collar? Holly asks. And is the other roux okay? Okay, answers the team. We're ready. Gabriel unties the top of the mail's bag and immediately the burlap boils with movement. He's doing somersaults in the bag, Gabriel reports. It's all he and Joshua could do to hold the roux. Through the bag, the male grabs one man's glove and pulls it off. He bites another tracker on the finger. Now four men are struggling. I've got his head here, says Gabriel, but I can't figure it out. But the nose is right here. Through the burlap, Holly delivers the anesthetic. Oh, but he is tough, says Gabriel. Finally, the bag stops wiggling. At 11.30 a.m., the male is lifted out of the bag and laid out on the table. The team goes to work. 17 times 12 is the heart rate, Holly tells Joel. 22.7 circumference of the neck, says Toby. Here's the collar. Let's put it on. Respiration is 20, says Holly. Now we'll take his temperature. Next, the chip. And after that, we'll go for the hair. Everything is going like clockwork. Then Christine warns, respiration slowing. That's it. Let's pull the mask off, says Lisa. It's 11.37 a.m. His ears are twitching. Let's get him back in the bag, says Holly. It's all over in just 10 minutes. Great work, says Lisa. Noon. We're at the tree kangaroo's house. The men have cut fern fronds and lined two, the two apartments inside with soft, moist carpet. 
They've used ferns to screen the wall between the new pair of and Oppum, so the animals won't upset each other. Oppum looks calm, though his leg is no better, and now he's he is now taking banana leaves from Christine's hands. We all sit quietly while one of the trackers opens the cage door. Tess climbs out of the bag and scurries up the perch. She regards us with interest, but no fear. Lisa has named the male Christopher, in honor of my pig, who grew to 750 pounds and lived to age 14. The kangaroo Christopher rushes out of his bag and climbs to the highest perch. Joelle and Gabriel want to make sure the collars are working, so they have brought their radio receivers along to check. Each animal has its own frequency, almost like a phone number. If Joelle wants to tune into Tess, he dials up channel 151.080. Christopher's channel is 150.050. Both collars work fine. We're all delighted. One tracker is so enthusiastic he wants to go out for a hunt to hunt more, for more tree kangaroos this very afternoon. But the hotel is full, says Lisa. Since Christopher and Tess are healthy enough to return to the wild, they will be released tomorrow. For now, though, the cage has all three kangaroos it could hold. We all shake hands, hug, and smile. Everyone is beaming with a mixture of excitement, enthusiasm, and relief. Oh, exhaustion and relief. The first collared male, Matshiki tree kangaroo, says Gabriel, history. Okay, and that's it.